Chapter 1 The Australian Magpie A bird with a reputation as an urban menace, known for terrorising locals and small children year round, or as a scavenger with little sense of personal space. This cold and vicious perception, of course, undersells the magpie's complexity. For example, magpies are a made for life species. Once a pair settles on a patch of territory, they'll defend it for their entire lives. Magpies can also live up to 20 years, so it's likely that the magpies you saw as a child in your neighborhood growing up are the same ones you now see as an adult. Magpie territory is also quite small, meaning that they'll remember all the people that pass through it. Magpies are also known to hold funeral type gatherings for fallen members of their flock. Magpies will gather around a body like this for sometimes hours, calling together incessantly. This type of behaviour raises the question of whether emotions such as grief are solely a human trait or whether they can be found in all animals. Most argue that they gather around corpses as part of a risk avoidance strategy. Corvids will call out other corvids to gossip and share information to understand the danger and avoid it in the future, so a way to reinforce social bonds among survivors. Chapter 2 The European Rabbit the first European rabbit arrived in Australia in 1859. A wealthy British settler in Victoria by the name of Thomas Austin, this is him, was an avid hunter and regular host of lavish shooting parties in his native England. But what he found in Australia was that there was nothing much to aim at. So he wrote to his brother and ordered a ship called Lightning to bring him 24 wild rabbits, which he let roam free on his estate. Hoping to hunt their offspring, Austin let a few free, saying at the time, the introduction of a few rabbits could do little harm and might provide a touch of home. Owing to a lack of natural predators and ideal climate conditions, from Austin's backyard, it would take less than 50 years for the European rabbit to spread across the entire continent. To address the infestation, the Australian government decided to build an immense rabbit-proof fence and span across the entire country, finally completed in 1950. Of course, the European rabbit can not only jump very high, but also burrow underground, making it essentially useless. The rabbit-proof fence would go on to serve as the inspiration for Doris Pilkington's 1996 novel, Follow the Rabbit-Proof Fence, which was later adapted into a 2002 film. Austin's name was rarely mentioned in any coverage surrounding the rabbit-proof fence at the time. It was only later that he would become synonymous with the rabbit outbreak. After his death in 1871, Austin's wife Elizabeth used her husband's money to open up a hospital for incurable diseases in Heidelberg, Melbourne. She would also establish the Austin Home for Women in Geelong. When she later died in 1910, she was commemorated for her philanthropic contributions. She is perhaps the Austin that should be better remembered in history. The Canberra conception of nature is not necessarily one that fits its environment. Its seasons, half its wildlife, half its plants, are imported from half a world away. The ANU campus illustrates this paradox through the diversity of its wildlife, for better or worse. 